Hi, Dave here from Powerhoof with a quick look at my adventure game system for Unity called PowerQuest. Um, it's something I've been working on for a couple of years and um, it's time, I guess, like a, it's at a point where I want to start sharing it with people, getting people's reaction and, and getting them to try it out and let me know what they think. I've been using Unity for a while and I started working on, um, oh, I wanted to start working on adventure games in it. But uh, having previously used Adventure Game Studio, I'd kind of been spoilt by the nice uh, workflow and features that that has. And so I kind of wanted something that worked a bit, bit more similar to Adventure Game Studio than say Adventure Creator or other um, Unity assets worked. And so I started building this. Um, this game here was my like test, um, test project uh, built while I was developing the system. And then um, we entered Adventure Jam um, the last couple of years, the first time we did Peridium, um, and that uh, we kind of did it really fast. It was in sort of about a week we made that, um, and it was a bit of a trial by fire for the system, but it worked really well. And then after that, uh, last year we did this game, Alluvium, which is another kind of thriller adventure game. Um, but that's the sort of thing that I've kind of been interested in making in it. So these are pixel art, although the system would work without pixel art, but it's definitely 2D, the sort of thing you might might think of as an adventure game studio game. Yeah, so I guess I'll just dive straight into showing you the system. Uh, where am I? So I've got a little, just a folder here um, with some art assets and uh, the PowerCast Unity package which I've downloaded. Uh, so the first thing to do is open up Unity, click new to create a new project. I'll call it demo quest and I'll make it a 2D project and create it. And so I'll that will load. If you haven't used Unity before, it's probably a good idea to um, find a sort of overview tutorial, get, get a bit familiar with it. Um, but I can try and kind of give you the basics. Uh, so the first thing to do once this is open is to click on window and find oh sorry no the first thing to do is to this thing's huge no. okay is to drag in the powerquest unity package and that will import my powerquest system basically into unity into your project da, 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 da. Um, and next is click on window up here and click on PowerQuest. So that'll show this little window here. I like to dock that one over here. Um, usually I have a bit more space. This is like a lower resolution than my um, desktop resolution normally is. Um, but yeah, basically click setup now and that will set up an, a sort of template project for you. Um, this is just the first time you do it in a project. You, you click that. Um, so I guess a bit of a just overview of Unity layout. Um, you've got uh, down the bottom, you've got your project window, uh, bottom left. I might just move these things around a bit, but there we go. I think I like, usually like it kind of like that. So um, the project window has uh, all the assets for your entire project, basically your entire game. And then this hierarchy one up here has the um, what, what's in the current room, in the current scene. So in this case, it's got some cameras and some and, and the actual room data. Um, if I click on, say, the room, then you'll see on the inspector over here, this inspector panel, that will have all the data for the, the, the object, object that's currently selected. Um, so in this case, it's a room and it's got a description, um, a tick box where the player is visible, uh, and some other random stuff. Um, so what I kind of aim to do a bit with my system is to stop you having to worry so much about the hierarchy in the project uh, windows. So um, most of what you, you'll do with the adventure game stuff is in this PowerQuest panel. Um, so you've got the room, two rooms here, a title room and a forest room. Uh, in Unity, um, I kind of the concept of a room or a is known as a scene. So um, you can click the scene button and that'll load the Unity scene for that for that room. Uh, Adventure Game Studio uses the, the terminology room to, um, so that's kind of what I'm using as well. Um, you've got um, all the different elements, I guess, that you have, that make up an adventure game. So you've got uh, characters, um, basically 
um, people or whatever that can move between rooms, they can talk, they can walk, all that stuff. Uh, inventory items, um, dialogue trees, so for instance, uh, the kind of Monkey Island style thing where you, you sort of talk to a character and there might be a number of options to choose between. Um, but uh, well, let's get started with hit by new play, uh, which is basically how you test the game. So this game, this um, game window down here shows the actual game and it lets you test it. So new game, well I guess this is a test project for an adventure game. Sure looks adventure-y. And so like my character uh, can walk around, you can just mouse over things, uh, let's pick up the bucket. Um, Dave Soup's to pick up the bucket. Yay, I got a bucket. And so um, the, the, the interface that sort of comes with it by default is um, a two-click interface, so similar to the Wadjet Eye games or Beneath Still Sky, I guess, um, where your inventory's at the top. You can uh, right-click to look and left-click to interact, so I'll right-click on the bucket. It's a blue cup. I mean, a bucket. Uh, you've got some options up here for volume subtitles and to save and exit. So this is all stuff which is pretty um, pretty simple um, temp template placeholder, like if you were making a full adventure game you'd be customizing all this stuff, uh, doing it in the way you want. Um, but yeah, so I can use the bucket on the well. Dave lowers the bucket down and collects some juicy well water. Yay, I solved the real hard puzzle. Um, the end. <laughs> Yay. Um, yeah, so... Um, I guess one thing I'll do is change this from free aspect, which means like it'll be whatever whatever shape you want the game to be 16.9. So that's more of like how you uh, test the game in the aspect ratio that you're building it for. Um, but it's flexible, so you know the, the game would still run fine with 16.10, or maybe 4.3 would be pushing it because there might be some things where the characters are walking to places that, um, that are a bit off screen. But yeah, it's, it's flexible, you can do that how you want. Um, so I guess, that, so the next thing I guess is, let's see, if we go to that forest scene and I'll, I'll show you how a room is set up. So now I've selected the forest scene and then I'm gonna click the room tab and you can see we've got some hotspots. So there's a forest in the background, there's this cave and there's the sky. Uh, so hotspots are any things that you can click on with the mouse and interact with, but um, they don't have any visuals associated with them, might be just baked into the background or something like that. Uh, props on the other hand uh, do have visuals associated with them, so they anything where you've, you've got a sprite that's in the room, that's basically a prop. Uh, some of them aren't interactable, so like the background and the foregrounds here, um, you can't interact with them, you, they're not clickable or anything, uh, they're just basically a sprite. And the way that walk behinds work in this basically things that your character can walk in front of or behind uh, is a bit different than Adventure Game Studio if you're used to that. So the way that works in here is um, it, um, is that you just have it as a separate sprite and I can show you like here. So I can move this around the scene. Um, and they also have a, a baseline which is sort of the point that you'll be able to walk behind it or not. Um, which is very similar to Adventure Game Studio, but yeah, that's this one's interactable. So, and so is this bucket over here. Um, and they props can be turned on and off. They can be edited in script, like to do whatever you want. Uh, what else we've got? We've got regions. So a region is just an, an area of the screen that the character might walk on and trigger an event, or something like that. And points are basically just um, a, a named position. It makes it easier to to use the position in, in the script. So, yeah. Um, what else? Ah, walkable area is the final one. Um, I'll sh that, that's a good place to show you the way you edit this sort of thing. Um, so a walkable area, you edit by clicking edit this edit collider button and um, compared to Adventure Game Studio where you sort of paint this stuff, you'll be editing them by dragging these points of a polygon so to build out the area you want and also adding um, and removing holes in the polygon uh, and see the walkable component here has this holes list if you click the plus um, and show polygon editor and edit collider then you can uh, put some holes in the in, in so sort of things that you kind of walk around um, with this collider editor 
you just click anywhere to on the line to create a new point and drag it around and to delete points you hold control it goes red and then you click that deletes them so I'll remove that again um, so I guess the next thing to show is scripting so as you'll see there's uh, look use and inv, inv buttons uh, next to all the interactable things um, so for example the cave um, if I use the cave it'll open this script window and the script window um, says what happens when you uh, click on the cave so I'll, I'll hit play and because I've got this scene selected it'll immediately start in the scene and make it big for you so if I click on the cave he says no way am I going in there there might be beetles let's um okay and one nice thing you can do with this is you can see all the things he does so he walks to where I've clicked he faces it um, the dot 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 means he'll just pause for a, a half a second and then he says no way am I going in there he faces down pauses and says there might be beetles um, let's see what happens if I look at it if I right click on it it's nothing interesting well it's not very good let's let's add a look at thing and so one nice thing you can with my system is that you don't have to stop editing the game you can as long as there's already a script file for that room you can just click um, click one of the buttons and start editing straight away so let's look at the cave okay there's nothing in there it just says end um, so let's say walk, walk to clicks and then get Dave to say uh, it looks spooky now let's look at the cave it looks spooky um, so now that function is there I can edit it without having to do anything else so uh, what click let's face it as well and let's get Barney to face me to face Dave so see um, stands for character and so all the character functions are under under the letter C so C uh, all, sorry, all the different characters so there's three well there's two really there's Barney and Dave and then this one is sort of whoever the current player character is um, so um, and then I can click dot again and see all the functions for a character so for example I can make them walk to something but we're just gonna get uh, Barney to say sure does apply and then look at it again it looks spooky sure does so because of that fast turnaround um, that makes editing interactions and things like that really quick and, and fun um, and this, this scripting kind of panel is it's sort of tailored to be to make it easy to do all the kind of the main things you want to do so editing uh, so like walking places looking at things talking to people animating things so if, so like say say I want to make the bucket animate or something uh, I can say props dot bucket dot uh, animation and then just say I've got an animation called uh, bill or something then that that will um, make set, set up to that animation um, or I don't know anything so um, the different letters are you can find in this power quest adventure API thing um, E for engine, C for character, R for room so basically that's how you get into doing stuff so say I might have like an inventory item I've got a bucket I can uh, add the bucket to the current player so the player will have picked it up basically um, or maybe there's E dot that's a good one fade out um, dot 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 you got to fade in again let's see that looks spooky Ooh, you're fading out cool yeah anyway that's the scripting um I guess uh, I could show you where all the uh sorry the different sort of setup for objects so you've got um hotspots and props uh, if I click on hotspot for example and click this little data drop down on the on the component the hotspot component in the inspector that's got all those kind of adventure game specific stuff that you'll be able to edit in game so anything you see here you can also edit in the in the script so for example um, hotspots dot forest dot um, baseline is there description etc etc um, so those are things they're all sort of saved when you save the game and all that sort of thing um, and all editable and that's it's pretty similar to the properties you have in Adventure Game Studio if you've used that and props have the same thing uh, characters have the same thing 
so characters have the sort of description when you mouse over them what it says um, the current room they start in the position that they're standing um, where they what, what direction they're facing their walk speed the color of the text um, uh, what animations they currently have things like that yeah so the next thing I guess I'll show you is setting up I'll show you setting up a, a character because that's a bit more complicated but something that you obviously need to do um, the, the, I guess the process for building a new project is to just start with this this template one and then uh, re, like delete and, and add your own stuff to replace mine uh, so let's add one called Jim mm, I'm just gonna okay, create and uh, and he'll appear in in the hierarchy here. Now characters are a bit a bit fiddlier than some of the other objects to set up, but I'll sh um, I'll show you what the deal is. So basically, you know, I've created him. What it's done is in the project, um, it's created a folder in the game under the characters folder called Jim, and inside that is the actual um, Unity object itself. Uh, a folder for the sprites, uh, this importer thing which lets you import um, animations in a sort of easier way. But I'll show you. I'll show you the sort of more basic way, I guess. Um, so I've got some art already s set up for it. Huh? Art. Okay, so I've got an idle, talk, and walk frames. So I'm just going to select all these and drag them into Unity, into the Jim's sprite folder. Okay, so they're all there. And the next thing I want to do is create animations from them. So the easiest way I think to do that is to right click, uh, go to create and animation from sprites. And then in, under window, there's Power Sprite Animator, which is another of my tools that um, I'm including in this because it's pretty useful. <laughs> it's uh, basically allows you to edit sprite animations, frame animations. Um, so I've got an idle, and then I'll make a uh, talk. So the talk one will make it looping, tick that, see how that goes. And, and I can kind of edit the length to make it a bit slower. Um, the sample rate, you can increase that how as much you want depending on how kind of fine-grained you want the you want to be able to edit the talking stuff so yeah this is pretty made to be pretty easy to edit um, okay so walk one create mission from sprites all right and make that looping as well yeah it looks good maybe it's a bit fast yeah, that looks good whatever um, now, usually I put my animations in this root gym folder as well, just to have them sorted nicely. Okay, so we've got an idle animation, talk animation, and a walk animation. Um, the R at the end is important, so uh, in fact the, the naming here is important, because if I click on character gym, it'll, it says his animation idle is, is the word idle, uh, it's, and then walk is walk, and then talk is talk, so they can be whatever you want as long as they match um, these animations, with the exception that this um, character at the end, the R, that means that those are his right facing animations. So, um, so like, the, yeah, characters can, might, usually will you want have to have characters so that they'll have animations for the different ways they're facing, uh, up and down and left and right, potentially um, diagonals as well if you want. Um, and so the, those naming conventions are important for that. Um, in this case, I've just got just got right ones, but I've also got in here uh, an up one, so I'll add that to show you. Okay, idle up. Okay, so now now if I'm face if this character faces upwards, he'll he'll have that um, idle animation. Uh, you you don't have to have the the thing at the end. If you don't, then it just won't use won't like calculate which way to face, and you can have as many or as few different directions as you want. If you want diagonals you can add them if you don't that's fine um, it'll automatically flip them and stuff like that if, you, if, if there's not a separate left and right uh, all right so uh, my character Jim here 
Um, let's. Okay, there's a few more things we have to set up on him, so I'm just going to move him over here so we can see him better. He's quite big compared to these other ones, but that's all right. Okay, so uh, one of the things you have to do is change the offset of the sprite so that his feet are at the this sort of zero point. So to do that, I'm scrolling down in the inspector, which again, like my, my screen resolution is quite low to record the video to make things big for you, but um, scroll down to this power sprite one, and then I'm just going to put in an offset here. So him up to like there, good enough. Um, <clears throat> and uh, for Jim, I guess maybe we'll make him the player character. So we'll, we'll start him in the forest. Um, what's his current? We'll put him, we'll start him in his current position. So negative 70, negative 21. And I'll just make him walk fast. We don't have to sit around waiting for him to walk around. What else do we need to do? Eh, we can just leave his text color and things. Um, but we, because we, he's a player character, I'm going to make it so that he's not clickable. So I'll untick that. Cool. And I'll hit apply. And the other thing, because he's the, we want him to be the uh, player character, I'm just going to drag him up to be the first one. Okay, let's hit play and see what happens. Okay, well, my other character was talking still when he comes in, but that's fine. Um, so, yep, yeah, I can walk around. Looks like my um, baseline's a bit messed up. Maybe that's the Wells baseline actually, so let's, let's have a look. Well, yeah, baseline's pretty low. Let's put that back up there. there go. Oh, it's because I moved the well probably. And anyway, um, low, so maybe let's try um, adding another room now. It's the other thing which is which you're going to want to have to do. Um, saving the project out of habit. Uh, so some actually some things, so like characters, for example, if it's basically if it's not something in a room and you edit it in the hierarchy, then you do have to hit apply so that that's saved um, because uh, otherwise when you go when you go between the different scenes, it's not going to be saved. Hitting apply basically saves it down into in the project rather than just in the current scene that you're looking at. But that's also nice because it means you can sort of edit things in here when you're just debugging stuff. Next, let's create a new room. <clears throat> uh, let's say we, we want to go into the cave and create a room in there. So currently got two rooms, title and forest. Let's plus add another one. Call it cave. Great. Now I'll save the current scene, it's fine. Alright, so now we've got a blank room. If I click the room tab, there's nothing in there. Um, and we want to add something in there. So um, again, I have some uh, room art, so I can drag that to the sprites folder, and we want to add a prop, because props are what has visuals, so I'll make a prop for my background, call it, no, call it back, so I'm just calling it, and then in the prop component you can scroll down to the sprite anim, and drag your new sprite over that, click it again, select the prop, drag this room cave sprite into Sprite, sorry, the Sprite Renderer. There we go. Um, for the rest of the art, so so well, I'll show you some extra stuff in a bit, but um, first we'll set up the walkable uh, area. So I show Polygon Editor and click Edit Collider, and let's drag that out to be roughly what we want. Holding Control to delete verts that I don't want, and I guess that'll do. Um, what else do we want in here? I guess, well, we could add a point for, um, uh, maybe for the enter point, and then uh, let's have another one called enter walk. And say we want to enter, okay. Um, So, I mean, I'll show you how to add a hotspot, I guess. Um, let's make one for a stalactite. I've got no idea how to spell that stalagmite. That's probably spelled wrong as well. Um, okay, so I've added a hotspot. 
um, I'll click, click it and I'm going to scroll down and edit its collider and let's put it oh static might grow up from the bottom so that could be this one all right we're going to static might and maybe we want to um, set a baseline um, look at what to so I guess that'll walk to it and kind of look down at it um, and then say we want to, uh, let's walk to, walk to clicks, face it, and then um, get the narrator to say um, it's too uh, hard to move, whatever, yeah, that'll do. It's an example. Back to the scene. Okay, um, what else do we need? Uh, if I hit play, oh, it'll start testing straight from this scene. Um, so you can see my walkable area is working, but um, I've got no walk behind, so I'm walking in front of everything. So let's remedy that. Um, so I'll take the opportunity to show you uh, a different way of getting your sprites uh, and animations into the game using this importer sort of asset thing I have. Basically this uh, it serves as a map between your Photoshop uh, or a sprite files. I'm using a sprite at the moment. Um, so I click the little dot 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 for the source image and navigate to my cave. Uh, and I can also just open that up in a sprite. Okay so here it is. So it's got it's got a few different frames. Um, so this thing is made to, for importing uh, frame by frame animation basically. Um, but I use it to sort of separate layers as well. So I've got um, basically my foreground here with the background cut out. Um, and the important thing to note is the frame numbers. So I've got um, on the second frame is the background, the third frame is my foreground, and then I've got this medallion prop, I guess, on the fourth. So minimize that. And in this animation name bit, I'm going to add uh, background, uh, foreground, and um, medallion, I'll just call it metal because I can't spell medallion. Um, is that right? So it started on frame two. So let's put two. So now I've got frames two, three, and four. And then if I just hit import sprites, it's imported all of them, create animations, create some more for me. And then I can just add the props. So let's add, um, uh, four, and we'll add an interactive one called metal. So those animations are all correct. Um, and then back in my room, if I select these props, I want to set up their walk behind. So baselines, basically, I control the order of where things are drawn. So you want the foreground stuff to be out the front, um, background to be at the back. And well, let's just try that and see if that worked. Fingers crossed. Yep, I can walk behind stuff. And then there's also this uh, metal. Oh, let's try it. Let's pick up the metal. So I better set up its data. See that. So uh, look at it, walk to it, and edit. Probably got a collider for it. And maybe we'll edit some data. I thought I forgot. Let's look. Description. Let's call it shiny thing. Lovely. Um, yep, it's all clickable, whatever. Yep, there's also stuff for like parallax and scrolling and cool stuff like that in the props. Um, and then it's also got shortcuts for your script functions there as well. Um, notably, I guess the room also has, has those, um, has a lot more functions. So on enter room, maybe let's on enter room, we'll set the player to their, to this enter point. So click that. Um, C.player dot uh, position, uh, set position I'll say, uh, is points dot enter. Yep, so that'll happen before it fades in. And then after fading in, uh, C dot um, player dot walk to points dot and to walk. Just sets the position. 
Okay, so that should start him out at the bottom, Stop, makes him walk upwards, like he's entering, all good. And then, say, oh yes, metal, let's use the metal. Um, walk to clicks, face clicked, and um, let's say, you take the metal. Um, and we want to turn the metal off, so props dot metal dot visible equals false. And I also want to make it not clickable. Props dot metal dot clickable equals false. And I could, alternative to that, I could just say dot uh, disable. That'll do both. It's easier. Uh, I guess that'd be a good time to, um, a good opportunity to say, uh, add an inventory item, that kind of thing. Only thing, you take the middle. Now it's gone. Hooray! Um, and just as a final thing, let's uh, let's make another hotspot called exit. And this. And and then when you click on that. Uh, what to click? Um, set the player's room. Player dot room equals capital R equals uh, R for rooms dot forest. Okay, and also if you're in the forest, where are we? Um, if you're yep, so I go to the forest and. Select the room, and when I enter the room from the f from the cave, I want to place the player where the cave is. So, um, say if uh, r dot previous equals r dot cave, um, c dot player dot position equals uh, what do we got hotspot dot, dot cave dot walk to point. And let's try that out. So we'll start in the cave, hit play. Looks up, get some Delian. Watch the exit. Oh, I didn't set the walk to point. And he's started, moved to this, the correct start position as well. So obviously there's more work to be done, um, getting this cool game being made. But um, I think that shows you the kind of basically how to, how to start making stuff, get st assets in the game. Um, start scripting uh, and there's sort of documentation for all that to get you further into it but um yeah um you can just email me if you want um if you've got questions or there's a discord power of discord you can jump on it's got a power quest channel um or just yeah however you want to contact me or or um, forum posts that i've posted this on just ask questions there and um i'm kind of at a at a sort of beta stage i guess where i'm just trying to work out what else I've got to add before I make it more sort of a more bigger public launch but um yeah it'll be good to see what you think so thanks for watching um and I guess that I'll have the links to download the the system in the YouTube comments and stuff so check it out there all right see ya